Liam Bowen, head coach at UMBC. I've put together a series of videos that goes through how we program our pitchers, and I'm going to start with one that goes through how we set up our daily throwing progression for each of our guys. I'm recording this during the uh, COVID-19 quarantine and shutdown, so I thought it'd be a good time to give you guys a little bit of an idea how we program our pitchers day to day in terms of how they use their practice time. So in this, I'm going to be focusing on what they're doing for their daily throwing. I'm not going to be incorporating any team defense or any um, you know thing that they would be doing as a, a group part of practice, just the work that they do on their own from a, a day-to-day standpoint. So I think the first thing when you're coaching the pitchers, which I did uh, my entire career up to becoming a head coach, so it was uh, 13 total years of coaching college pitchers, the first thing you have to do is you have to give their daily routine a real firm structure. Uh, it starts with a warm-up, making sure their bodies and their arms are activated. There are some great resources for those, including um, some that I put together for Figure It Out a little while ago, so you can check those out. Right here, uh, I have a breakdown of what they're going to do from a throwing progression standpoint every day. And it starts with a set of drills, uh, plyo drills, dry drills, and spin drills. Um, I won't go into the, the nitty-gritty of those drills, but it's a, a lower-intensity drill segment where we're trying to create some of the, the throwing habits that are common to high-level pitchers. Uh, cadence throws, uh, this is uh, something I've actually just recently added um, to try and help our guys develop a, a more rhythmic throwing pattern. And this is where, as the guys start to get into throwing the baseball, uh, they get to about 60 feet. Uh, they u- utilize some sort of step behind footwork, like a step behind and lift footwork, or just a st- straight step behind where their uh, throwing side foot is going behind their lead foot as they move towards the target. And then they're throwing to a down catcher, ideally with a, a throw down home plate uh, there. And what we're trying to do is create rhythm before they start to throw the ball with any kind of intensity and velocity because. What I've found as the years have gone on is if we try and create velocity before we create that rhythm, that's a, an open door to not being as consistent as we'd like to be. So that's their throwing progression before they get into their, their basic long toss, which I think by now everybody's pretty much uh, come over to the Alan Jager way of, of looking at things where you're going to arc the ball on the way out and, and uh, throw it on a line on the way back in. I, I think um, probably Alan Jager himself would tell you that's that's kind of the classic way of doing it. It's been around for a long, long time, um, even before he was writing about it. So uh, I've always kind of thought that was the way to go. So that's what their throwing is going to look like on a day-to-day basis. After that, we have some decisions to make as coaches on how these guys use their time. And they could end up uh, working on uh, more pitch execution. They could get into more of a recovery um, type of program. They could get into... Uh, something where they're going to uh, be working on what we would call the uh, the free 90 aspects of the job, which is you know defending the position and defending the running game. Or they get into their post throw, which is how they maintain their bodies uh, to be ready to pitch the next time that we need them. So I will go into all of that on the next video. So that was how we set up our throwing progression for each of our guys each day. And then the next video is how we regulate their intensity, so how we scale them up or scale them down depending on what their needs are here at UMBC.